In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install a backup power supply, usually for an alarm system, can be used for mag locks on doors, also cameras, various applications, but nevertheless, I'm going to be using it for sensors on an alarm system, and I'm going to go through this uh, step by step, and before I do, let me just show you what it is that I'm referring to. There are many different types of backup power supplies. This happens to be one that can handle a an 18 amp hour battery, and what does that mean? Well, let me open it up and show you what I'm talking about by battery capacity. Here is the unit and if I open the door which is lockable here are the keys you have the option of installing different battery sizes now the most common battery size is the 7 amp hour 12 volt and yes I know it says 8 amp hour this is called a gel battery slightly longer um, lifespan good quality battery uh, but this is the size of the 7 amp hour battery now what I highly recommend, especially for alarm systems and uh, uh, mag locks, is an 18 amp hour battery. And the reason why I recommend it is these are very robust batteries. They seal dead acid batteries. They uh, last for over three years. And you know why they last for so long? Because if you think about it, the battery lifespan is dependent on how uh, many times it got close to its, uh, well, let's call it, uh, minimum uh, voltage position. So that means if this keeps going to 7 volts and it's supposed to be 12 volts, you keep um, discharging it too much, the lifespan is going to reduce. And that happens, you know, after a few hours of the power being down, while a battery like this, you know, unless you leave it for many, many hours, look, it also depends on the loading. But I mean, if you just for camera set, I mean, if it's just alarm sensors, this battery will literally provide you 24 hours uh, with a large um, installation of PRR and beams and so forth so you'll rarely actually ever um, push this battery to the limit therefore the lifespan will be quite great okay so these are the terminals you can plug in the battery this is for the smaller battery and if you are going to be using the 17 amp hour battery or 18 amp hour battery see there are the uh, nuts and bolts and you're going to screw it in and the i call this a generic power supply because really all it is is a powder coated box um this is probably a local product well, and the reason why i say local i mean it's like in my country in your country might look exactly the same with a, just a different logo so all this is is connect to your mains live neutral earth and thereafter you will have the ground wire 12 volts and when the power goes off it will then feed its the power supply will then feed itself directly from the battery until the power is put back on so i'm going to show you how to install this thing and i've done this several times i've got some old ones some that have actually popped and what i mean by popped is these power supplies don't always last uh very long sometimes they as you can see even some some uh, burn marks there this power supply popped i don't know if it was lightning or whatever it was but not re not really that easy to repair i have repaired in the past but it's really not worth it because this whole thing uh is not um does not cost that much it's really the battery which costs half the price of the unit okay so i'm going to go and show you step by step how to install it just letting you know in the specifications this happens to be five amps and uh without further ado let's go and install it okay so the installation location happens to be in the top of a cupboard because you know many people keep their alarm systems in their cupboards for some all right so what you're looking at is a 64 channel alarm system i think half of it is in the other side of the house that is a sms communicator and on the wall here there is another module and that is a remote control uh yeah a remote control module so I see they've put some, all these power uh, uh, power cords are, are actually connected here. So that'll actually make life a bit easier. But now what I want to do is I want to install the power supply, backup power supply, just over there. Okay, right. The plan is to install this a little bit higher. We want to be able to see these LEDs if we are standing on the ground on the floor so if it's here you can't really see this especially if the end user if you ask them if the power's on or charging they won't be able to see they have to get on the ladder so i'm specifically going to install this quite high up so that this can be seen from the ground level right so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open it up and i'm going to now measure uh for the the holes and it's very important that when you do installations you make sure everything is straight so I'm just going to use my spirit level now. Okay. Yeah, there we go.
Okay, so now <clears throat> some people like to put some glue at the back here. It's up to them. Okay, so I'm not making it tight yet because I just want to make sure that I get this straight. Okay, so it's straight. That's right, and now I'm going to put the battery in. Okay, before I put the battery in, I'm just going to do the nuts and bolts. Right, it's tight. Now, it does come with this extremely short power cable. I don't know what the point of such a short power cable is. It uh, it might reach... Now, nah, it's very short. So what I'm going to do is I did bring a spare plug, having had this problem in the past. And um, I've got the plug top. And then I've got the three core cable. So I'm just going to quickly make a plug quickly. An extension cord. So I've got to go from there. I want to do it neatly. So there and maybe there. I can hit it into the, the ceiling board here with uh, some saddles and, and I'll kind of feed it through this grommet over here. So that's about one meter. Okay, I've wired the plug. I'm now just going to open this so I can hardwire it into the uh, power supply. You should be using wire strippers. So don't be like me, use wire strippers, not wire side cutters. And just twist it. Twist. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just piercing this. I'm going to pierce this with a screwdriver. There we go, just open it up nicely. And I'm just going to wire it live to live, neutral to neutral, earth to earth. Now before I connect that up, I'm now just going to also wire the 12 volt. This is going to be the supply the 12 volt now i don't know if you remember earlier i did actually um, drill a separate hole there and what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to put a terminal block with uh, this is a terminal block and i'm just going to insert that into the wall It's going to be over there like that. Screw this into the wall. There we go. And this can then be wired directly into there. So that forms the kind of the terminal. Because you, you, it's not easy to keep getting in here and open and close. And you don't want lots of wires coming in here. So you just want it accessible near all the devices. Because remember there's a... Uh, GSM communicator, there's a remote control uh, extras here and the sensors. So it's nice on big installations you can actually use literally a neutral block. Uh, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like a terminal block with lots of lots of uh, spaces for your, your wires. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, strip this a bit and wire it into my... Yeah. And this has to be connected to the ground and positive of the power supply and remember this isn't on yet so I'm just letting you know that cool now here is the power cable and I'm now going to plug it in 
I'm um, also going to put the battery in here on the side. There's a terminal for it. I will show you what it looks like. And I'm going to plug it in. There we go. So you can see there's the... Let's see if we can... Yeah, so there's the power, it's on, DC 12 volt is present, and it's now charging. So I'm going to open this and just uh, show you the measurements. Just because it says it's 12 volt doesn't mean that I believe it. And that's why I brought my multimeter here. Here's the meter. Okay, so I'm measuring the output, which should be, that's here. And we should get 12 volts or thereabout. Okay, so it's 13.6 volts. Uh, it says they're 15% tolerance. I can read this. It's 12 volts to 15% tolerance. But this is not a real big, it's not a major problem because as I said, most alarm products have a varying range. So that will be okay, 13.6. As long as it's not uh, more than 15 volts if it's a 12 volt uh, alarm product, but overall, uh, I don't like the fact that it's not uh, close to 12 volts. But I'm sure once we load the the unit with with uh, items, it might go down. We can actually test that. Okay, so there's the wiring, the supply, and then the 12 volts. I'm closing that now. This thing is fine to do. And close it, and if you want, you can lock it. Okay, so these are all the sensor positives, the positives from the sensor wires. I've lengthened the the lead so that I can have more space here to uh, to attach the fly lead. And if that's long enough now. So there we go. There's the fly lead, and I'm just going to wire it in. Could I, I could go directly there, but I'm going here for the reason that I am going to keep adding things to this panel so that is why I have this terminal plug here for future growth right so to sum up there's the backup power supply 18 amp hour it's going to feed the peripherals of the alarm system I have a uh, what do you call this a remote receiver board I've still got to just wire the uh, 3G panel the 3G this this uh, gives you telematics updates you know you can control your alarm using this thing and then anything else that we decide to put on here, we can now just uh, bunny or what do you call it, jumper lead, jumper here and just keep building on. These are all the outdoor passives, PRRs, beams and so forth on this part of the alarm. So this is saving the panel now is no longer having to power these up. It's coming from the backup power supply. This battery here is now purely just to keep the alarm awake. So this now, this little seven amp hour battery will now last at least double time, considering there is almost no loading on the panel. If you're wondering what these red and black wires, these are for the keypads. It's important that the keypads remain on the alarm because the um, there is a, uh, a data wires, positive and negative, and they are with respect to the positive and negative on the bus. So, on the uh, board the, so the bus is with respect to the positive and negative so i have to keep the keypads on but other than that now i have a backup power supply installed thanks for watching